Welcome back to day five of the videos from Futavikens Museum. Today is another scorching day. Um, it is Friday and the weather is basically too good. Too, too good of weather is very, very bad for the museum because the local locals they choose to go to the beach instead when the weather is this nice um, so as you can see there's hardly any tourists at all uh, so they're at the beach and uh, we do have some fantastic white sandy beaches in this area so I can understand them now the reason I'm not showing up on camera is because I'm pre-recording and I can't change angles while I'm doing that and I have booked an interview with one of the volunteers here at the museum. So we're going to step inside here and see if we can have a talk with Maria. And, of, and as always, she has attracted one of the other volunteers. Hi, Maria. Hi, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling human again. That's good to know. Yeah. Yesterday, was it? It's 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 so weird that you can be so thirsty when you drank so much yesterday. <laughs> totally get that. Yeah, yeah. So I promised the audience that we would have a talk with you about being a volunteer at the uh, Fotovikens Museum. Now you've been here for how many years? Three or four. Three or four years as a volunteer. So, can you tell us a little, about, a, a little bit about your experiences as a volunteer here? Well, it's the best thing you can do, because I would always come back for that. I mean, I'm volunteering and working in my summer holidays. That means a lot, I think. Uh, when I came here for the first time, I just came here for one day to check out this place. And I fell in love right away. And like a couple of weeks later, I had holidays and I applied for a job as a volunteer. And since then, I'm always coming back. Yeah, I remember that first time. Yeah, what do you remember my first time here? Well, I was called to the museum shop. Uh, I was told there was a volunteer from Germany here, and I was going to show her around. And when I get inside the shop, there's this uh, pretty blonde metal girl standing there saying that she wants to be a volunteer. And uh, you surprised me. You're, you're clever and brilliant and funny. And it's going to be online, that's even better. <laughs> oh no, she has evidence! I didn't and think about that. Me yes! Because I was enthralled right away. Yes! And uh, you were my thrills master, and you taught me a lot of things. For example, I got this after becoming a fan of. Your music. Oh, the jaw harp. Yeah, I'm still yeah. not as good as you are, but I can make sounds at least. <laughs> Let's hear the sounds then. Okay. Playing for the master for the first time. Yeah. What do you say? Not as good as you are? You have evolved. Yes. Yeah, I'm How very... Two sounds? <laughs> yeah, I'm very impressed. Not bad. <laughs> Wash a goat. So, being a volunteer in Fruity Vegan is very cool because you can learn a lot of things like blacksmithing and the silver. Do you say silversmithing? I yeah, think. yeah. Yeah, uh, cooking like the Viking does, um, weavery, and everything that has to do with textiles. They have very great people here to teach you from dyeing to sewing and doing these decorations. Yep. How are they called? The, you mean the tablet weaving? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and the bakery, which is a nice place to be because there's plenty of bread all day. That is true. Viking bread. Uh, what else? Like leather working, woodworking. Yeah. Bow shooting. Thomas, you Archery. Me. Yes. And look, my arm looks better this year than last year. It's only a bit bruised. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> last, last time, <laughs> it looked like a galaxy made in yeah, purple. It was all black and blue. <laughs> yeah. So, I am getting better at bow shooting as well. Awesome! And x rowing Thomas, you taught me that as well. That is true. So, yeah, a lot to do in Fruity Beacon, and it's the best place to be because people are amazing. And campfires and storytelling, of course. 
Of course, of course, that is important. The main reason to be back is for telling the stories. Oh. They're even better live than they are on YouTube, and they are already great on YouTube. Oh. Why are you so nice to me? What do you want? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. The Vikings didn't have chocolate. Oh, and of meat. Well, they did uh, have that. We'll we'll see what we can do. Do you have uh, something to drink it out of? Pardon? Do you have something to drink the beer out of? Yes, I do have this fancy horn. Um, and actually, there are a lot of discussions among the Viking historians, reenactors, and everybody if the Vikings did use horns and what they did use the horns for, because there were a lot of findings, of course, obviously. Yeah. But um, they are not like describing this horn was used to drink meat of, so people are discussing if they were just decoration or to put money into them or food or whatever but there's a lot of proof that they were used as drinking horns as well so um, I have a very huge drinking horn and I like to drink my meat out of this horn yeah I also saw that you're cheating by having a um, uh, what, what should we call it like a framed for it to stand in well your blacksmith made it yeah that's true but I prefer a horn without such a stand do you know why because, and you drink it all at once. yeah, because you can't put it down before you have drunk it up. That's true. That's yeah. Point. But if you have like a really good meat in it, like very high quality meat, you don't want to drink it all in one. No. But you don't want to put it down either. I'm lazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now I have that on tape, so now I have evidence. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I am uh, officially part of the Alagit now. Yep. Um, and uh, Thomas did not buy me, just so you know that. that I am that's a the lie. I of uh, Veronica, actually. Do your right. friends know who Veronica is? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, some of them. So Thomas managed to convince the most amazing woman in all Viking villages in the world to be with him. Yeah. So, and that's my... How do you say that? Do you really say mistress? No, we say mistress. Right. So, I'm her thrall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how is she treating you? Amazing. Right. Yeah, she's great. She's teaching me a lot and she is very nice and funny. And I don't get to do shitty work. That's great. <laughs> that is true. So, how would you say that... Do you, have you seen a development from your first time here until this year? How, how has the work changed, if it has? What kind of development are you speaking about? I mean, as a volunteer. Yeah. Your experiences here from the first time you got here until this year. Has, has things changed, or are they as they've always been? Well, it, it becomes better and better the more people you know, and it's easier to ask as well, if you can, if you can learn this or that. Um, what I like a lot is that you are not bound to one skill, but you can, you can do woodcrafting for a couple of days, you can go smithing for a couple of days, so you get to know everything before you decide what you want to improve your knowledge of. Yeah, because one of the models we have here in Fotoviken is that those who know a lot teaches those who knows little. Yeah, I am one of those who knows little. <laughs> no, you know, you know a lot. Nothing I could teach. Mead brewing. That's the point, but we don't have a brewery yet. 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 That is very important. Yet. Yes, we are going to rebuild the smithy. Yep. And uh, where the old smithy is now, there's going to be a brewery. And this is where I would like to brew me once. Just once? No, one, I mean once in, once in it's the done. future and yeah. then forever. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to uh, say to the audience before we uh, thank them for their uh, attention? Um, I'm very happy to be here. And it would be so great to see some of you, and it's definitely worth to come here and stay for a while and listen. <laughs> and you would like to come to meet Thomas in person because he is the most impressive man you can meet. Oh, so. God.
I'm blushing. Yeah, you are a bit. <laughs> you know. So please, if you have the chance to come to Sweden, come around and see us. Tell us what you think and listen to some of Thomas' stories. Try to get a sip of the mead <laughs> once it's there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess that's it, isn't it? Yeah. So, hey, <laughs> And as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>